Good afternoon everyone and welcome to yet another field of barley. Um, we're over at one of the other farms now, a bit further away, just about to undergo uh, about a 10 mile cart. So um, yeah, I thought I'd bring you along for the journey. Again, variety uh, winter barley. That's a nice drum line. Winter barley, I think it's a variety called Tower. The other, the rest of it is, so I assume this is the same. Um, just stop and put it into the road gear. Easy as that. Put our beacon on as well. This is usually a little Ford, but at the moment it's just a big puddle. So uh, I'm probably not going to talk for this whole video, um, I might record it all but probably put the radio on at some point, but initially thought I'd bring you along, uh, I've done just done a run, now it takes about, did it in about 28 minutes, um, probably yeah, including tipping, probably about 30, 32 minutes, something like that, um, but yeah, back roads of Herefordshire, so not going to rush around on these and then uh, yeah onto a main road basically follow a main road almost all the way back into the farm so uh, yeah come along and see what we're up to but um, yeah I hope, hope you're all well anyway those of you that are doing harvest would be good to know how you're getting on so uh, let me know in the comment section below those of you with livestock let me know how you're doing with are you having to spread water on the grassland to keep the uh, to keep the grass alive or how are you coping with well what was the heat wave we seem to have had a bit of rain since then but are you struggling or are you all right do you think it'll be a tough winter um, be good to know and just have a bit of a discussion in the comments section for the, those of you that are kind of interested for those of you that just kind of watch tractor videos because um, you enjoy them then I hope you're enjoying the footage of yeah again I mean I should have put a video up before this but Fent 724 uh, and a 14 ton Richard Larrington behind us uh, it's actually a root crop trailer because got some potatoes up there this is common land but very nice it's very nice houses um, so these trailers have to go through a variety of things potatoes, apples, um, obviously all the grain, rape, um, all sorts really, so everything that's grown on the farm and then earlier had uh, had some poultry feed in it so we tipped that out and uh, put that into a lorry. So yeah, I mean trailer wise quite shallow um, but they're useful for quite, quite like, wow. Well, What's the word I'm looking for? You can use it for a lot of things. Good amount of variety, so um, it's probably a word that will come to me in a minute, but. Um, just concentrate on <laughs> not hitting any of these low trees. So yeah, I mean, this variety's done, if this is tower, because uh, this is the first field on this uh, new farm over here. So this is tower then across the other farms done really well um, very pleased with the variety the way it's yielding um, but yeah here we go this is us for the next 20 minutes um, 240 horsepower, I don't know if it boosts up to anything, but yeah, 724, so 240 horsepower, and a 50k box, you can get up to about 54.5k, um, probably about, yeah, 11, 12 tonne of barley behind us, um, trying to cram these trailers kind of as full as we can, so uh, we minimise the logistics going back and forth between the farm, because you'll see it's a, it's a fair way um, 
but there's some interesting sights along the way. Seeing there's a Lexian, there was a Lexian um, cutting rape up on the left hand side. I'll point that out, it's quite a way. Um, we're doing a bit of a loop here, so there's a couple of us on this um, kind of carting. Doing a bit of a loop, I don't think we'd meet anyway, uh, but just to make sure we don't meet on those little back lanes as you saw um, when we initially pulled out the field. But yeah, I mean, tractor wise, this is really smooth, really nice. I think slightly light on the front end, perhaps could do with a weight um, when carting. It's not too bad. I think, I don't know, you know, like going up these hills, you'll see we drop down to almost 30k at some points going up some of these hills. So whether we could do with a bit more kind of power, I don't know. Um, already got a nice. Uh, not too bad, a little queue of traffic. There's um, obviously want to pull in when we can, but there's a good a short stretch of kind of dual carriageway that comes up, so um, I'll leave it for a while. There's only three three vehicles behind us. Um, but the issue is when you get, you know, an Arctic lorry behind you, and you kind of have no option but to let them go past, because <laughs> they're gonna be stuck there all day otherwise, so. Um, yeah, just the way it is. If you um, haven't seen my videos from, when would it have been, 2017, probably July, August time of the P-Viners, um, have a little look at that. There's one video where we're moving the P-Viners. I think I spoke about this briefly in a video before, but the Max 25K there, um, a little convoy of us, two P-Viners, myself, karting, um, had the diesel bowels behind me. And there was a kind of mobile workshop behind the two P-Viners. We were going along one of the main roads in Lincolnshire, so that was that was fun. Held up quite a few people. Um, but at the end of the day, you've kind of got to judge it between pulling in and <laughs> constantly having to pull in because you're holding people up, um, but also, getting on um, so you need to find a kind of a balance between the two which can be difficult at times um, now I know this might seem kind of basic but um, I'm gonna mention it anyway uh, wearing my seatbelt because I know a lot of people don't and there's the other lad uh, <coughs> Thank you, Matt. So yeah, I got CBs as well. <laughs> Which is good, useful, always good. But yeah, I mean, it's gonna struggle to keep the combine going just because we're, there's two of us hauling, we could really do with like a third trailer carting. Um, so here we go, up to just, 38k. She struggles a little bit, and that's where I think um, maybe we could do with a slightly bigger tractor. I think these are absolutely ideal, um, but in certain situations like this, if you had an 828, I think you'd be absolutely fine. But then this is fine, <laughs> this is absolutely fine. This, I'm not complaining. Um, and this is a really kind of versatile tractor as well in terms of it's quite it's quite lightweight um, size wise it's quite small but obviously packs 240 horsepower into it um, but I suppose because of the size of the frame and uh, the chassis generally maybe you're not able to use the horsepower as you would in maybe a John Deere um, a bit weightier kind of sticks the weight down a bit better on the front end who knows who knows um, anyway, we keep going, and I think we might be coming up to where the class combine is with the all seed rave. And I'm not sure quite how well you'll be able to see it, to be fair, because <laughs> it's the other side of a valley. But for me, it's fairly clear. Maybe 
it's the next bit. Anyway, here we go, we're coming up to this dual carriageway bit, so should see some people get past. <laughs> I would slow down, but I'd be scared I wouldn't get up the hill otherwise, so I uh, can only do so much. But as long as you tuck in and kind of do your best to let people pass, there you go. Those of them that know the road will just go for it, so uh, it's more like the lorries I'm concerned about who probably don't know the roads quite as well as some of the locals. Flying by, there we go. And that's us, nothing behind us now. So um, there's some bits further up which allows people to overtake. Generally, that's quite a good little bit. Uh, um, means it doesn't have to stop. Pretty safe place to overtake. So, um, yeah. So, uh, for those of you who are farming, um, I saw on Twitter quite an interesting bit of information. So, if you have a look at the straw, some of it's quite pink. Um, particularly, well, it is in our case, and I know other people are. Um, and apparently, the reason behind that is potassium retention. So during rapid senescence, so when the crop was dying in the in the heat, it was trying to retain as much potassium as possible. Um, which apparently, turns the straw pink, which a lot of people are finding out as every day is a school day, as they say. So uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. But um, it'd be good to know. Good to have some pictures if. Any of you are in the same situation, seeing that kind of pink straw, or if you haven't, then maybe just go and have a look at, um, you know, a field of barley or a field of, of, I think, well, we've only done it in the barley, I don't know if it's in the wheat, but um, field of barley, just have a look at the swaths and uh, see what the straw's like, whether it's got a bit of a pink tinge to it or not.